Hey guys, Paul here. So I have not been able to make a video like this in a while, but I wanted to talk about the recent Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list because there's both a little and a lot to say about it. Um, came out last Friday, I was traveling uh, this past weekend, so I was kind of busy and wasn't really able to make a video talking about it. So this is less of a like, you know, reaction or whatever, since it's like a week late basically, but more of just some of my general thoughts, um, sort of reactions, like takes in terms of what like other people are thinking. And I want to hear what you guys think about the list, about maybe the implications of it, why it is a good or a bad thing. I know it, from what I saw, was not received super well by a lot of people. It kind of seems like um, people thought there wasn't enough done on Konami's part. And admittedly, it was a really small list. They banned Kashtira Arise Heart, they limited Chaos Space and uh, Bestial Magnemute, and they put Gazelle and uh, Herald of Orange Light 3. So, very, very small ban list. Not the smallest we've ever had, but pretty close. And um, I think, understandably, people felt a little bit underwhelmed. And so that kind of brings me to my first of my kind of maybe four major points about this. I have my notes right here. Is that um, I think Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, actually, ban lists have become a bit of an event for people. I've talked about this in past videos, but... I think a lot of the reason why people were disappointed with this list is just because people expect more out of ban lists. I'm not sure I entirely like like that practice, but it is what it is, right? People, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! gets... Um, people get tired of formats really quickly these days. I think people really crave change a lot. I think it's maybe um, a symptom of just the larger gaming space in like the modern age where, you know, we're used to frequent patches. We're used to patch notes. We're used to... Kind of the idea that like things need to be buffed, buff this deck, nerf this deck, buff this character, nerf this character, you know, this weapon, whatever it is. And so, you know, in a world where everything's kind of moving really fast and like there's always like battle passes and video games or like, you know, all these like kind of live service games or there's just an expectation that things need to change quickly and constantly and, you know, like new expansions come out and all that stuff. I think the ban list has inadvertently become a lot of people's... Um, sort of expectation that like every three or four months, Yu-Gi-Oh! is going to have drastic changes. And I've almost gotten the impression that sometimes people aren't so much concerned, like there's certainly this concern about like what cards actually like need to be hit in people's eyes, right? Like maybe they should hit these floodgates or they should hit this, you know, troublesome boss monster, or cut the consistency of this deck or, you know, whatever thing. But also I think some people care less about what specifically is hit and more about just the idea of what the ban list represents. It represents something new, it represents something exciting. So, you know, what was a really good idea, like in my opinion, maybe in the last few years, is like bringing certain things off the ban list. Like I remember that there was a lot of hubbub when like Yadagarasu came off the list, or Change of Heart. These are two cars that actually didn't end up really seeing a whole bunch of play, but just the idea of them coming off the list was exciting because any time that like a card comes, you know, off the banned list and comes to like one or, you know, even more than that, it's like a big deal. It just feels like something to talk about. Um, anytime that, you know, a deck in general kind of gets like pulled off the list, like people have been asking for Orcus Harp Horror or Electromite for a very long time or like Thunder Dragon Colossus. When those things happen, when those cards come off the list, it's just, it's exciting because we kind of wonder, oh, can, can this old deck kind of live up to its former glory? How will this change the format? If, you know, Thunder Dragon Colossus was to get plopped down right now today, what would happen? Like, you know, how, what decks would be benefited by this? What would be nerfed? What decks could play it? What decks couldn't? Uh, you know, if Harp Horror showed up again, like even if it was just a one, like what could Orcus be able to do now with the tools that are available now? And that's kind of why I think a lot of people were excited about even just the small hit there, or the small unlimit that was Gazelle, you know, just cause like, hey, Salamangrate just got support. Now their um, kind of crucial card came to three. So it's a lot more consistent. So like, you know, can Salamangrate, like, now there's like a new story there, right? Can Salamangrate's manage to like you know top events will they be meta right so um i think that more and more the ban list is becoming a an event something that people look forward to and they want more from and so i think that's a big reason why it was not well received and people didn't think konami really did enough it's just because like i think people wanted to see more cards get hit um or more cards change like even if nothing else really got hit it just if more cards came off the list that would be exciting um and as for like the stuff that didn't get hit you know um well, that's a different thing. That kind of brings me to my second topic, actually. So, um, it's the, this idea of kind of things being hit just because. So, I made a ban list predictions video a few weeks ago, and um, I was pretty clear in that video that I was like kind of coming from a place of ignorance. Like, I, I have not been playing a load of paper Yu-Gi-Oh! I've only been kind of following on the sidelines. And so, 
I think my ban list predictions were maybe not like the most informed thing, but I also noticed that just a common comment that I saw was people were being like, oh, Paul, like I think that you're suggesting these decks get hit just because they exist, right? Like I said in that video that I think maybe like Brandon could get hit. It could be like Branded Fusion. It could be, you know, some parts of the Bestial engine, like whatever, right? Could be the gimmick puppet. But um, there were a lot of people who were like, well, Branded doesn't deserve to get hit just because it's been around for a long time. And, you know, that's fair. I also, like I mentioned, um, things like, you know, the Rika deck possibly getting hit. Um, like the Rika Sun Avalon deck, right? Or um, the Pirelli deck possibly getting hit. Or the Runic deck possibly getting hit. And I thought that these were hits that some people, like, wanted. And I do think there are people who want those hits. But, like, on the other hand, there are people who are just like, no, like, this is unreasonable because I don't want these decks to get hit. Because either I play the deck or, like, it's, it hasn't been around that long. Or maybe it shouldn't get hit just because it's been around. That, that shouldn't, like, definitely be a reason for a deck to get hit. And, you know, after reading enough of the comments, I, I've kind of changed my tune about it a little bit. I think people are right. Like, it maybe isn't really all that cool to, like, just hit decks simply for being a little too good for a little too long. So, you know, I, I think that's true. But it's also kind of funny that now that the list dropped, there is a certain sense of, like, you know, like, where's the rest of it? You guys are supposed to hit this card. You're supposed to hit this card. Why didn't you hit this deck? Why didn't you hit that deck? So, um... Yeah, I don't really know. I think um, the reason Konami probably went for a smaller list this time, and you know, I don't really have any insight into it like beyond that, but the reason I think they might have done it is just because they knew that Kashtera Arise Heart was like kind of the obvious thing that likely needed to go. Um, but other than that, they kind of seem like they just want to let this format you know ride out and see what the players make of it. It's a period of time where like the Unchained deck has been picking up in popularity, and, um, you know, even like Rescue Ace and stuff like that are kind of beginning, and like Infernoble, all that, all those decks like that are kind of beginning to make their way into the format. And I think Konami wanted to leave things open for, you know, those decks to just meld in with all the other current threats, like maybe Pirelli, Runic, um, Branded, and kind of just see where we all end up at the end of it, right? Like, let's kind of, you know, leave the, leave the possibilities open and let the players kind of find their way through it and like navigate it and stuff like that. So uh, that's why I don't mind that the list is small. I, I see why people don't like it, but I think that's okay. And then my next thing, and this isn't specifically about this ban list, but maybe just kind of a general player behavior, is that we as Yu-Gi-Oh players, we as gamers, um, are kind of, you know, career complainers, right? Uh, and that's not like saying that it's just, it's not me. Like I complain about Yu-Gi-Oh like every other day on this channel, right? But I think everybody, you know, particularly with competitive things, we always will have a card we sort of complain about. Like with this list, a lot of people were like, okay, why didn't they hit Dimension Shifter? Why didn't they hit Eradicator Epidemic Virus? Why didn't they hit Dimensional Barrier? Like these are the problematic cards. Why haven't they hit Anti-Spell Fragrance or these other Floodgates? You know, why haven't they hit this, 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 and this? And I kind of find myself thinking that, you know, even if they were to hit maybe one or two of those cards, we would still want the rest of them to get hit. And then even once that's hit, people will kind of find a way to complain about the next thing. And, you know the the gambit sort of keeps going because it, with Yu-Gi-Oh, there's always going to be cards that kind of prevent you from winning. Or there's always going to be cards that kind of, like, that, that cause your loss. I lost to Dark Ruler No More. I lost to Forbidden Droplet. I lost to Evenly. I lost to whatever, you know, Droll and Lockbird stopped my turn. And I think that ultimately, like, players are always going to kind of complain. I think, like, even if Konami got rid of every Floodgate, like people seem to want, there would still be stuff that people would just sort of whine and complain about. Again, I'm not saying that it's, like, bad or that I don't, you know, have those same thoughts, but just that, you know, um, maybe, maybe Konami has just sort of decided, like, we're not really going to hit floodgates for that reason. I've had a theory really on stuff like, um, Dimensional Barrier for a while now, and, uh, my sort of take on those cards is that, while I don't love them or anything like that, I think that they just, Konami probably keeps them around because they're equalizer cards, because they can kind of allow for maybe a a lower tier deck or a less skilled player to still be able to, you know, pull out a win every now and again. Because if you really think about it, right, like these like like floodgates are annoying, but they're rarely actually the decks that end up winning the event outright. They, you know, certainly will stop some other people from winning the event. They might be unpleasant to face in your, you know, early to middle rounds or whatever, and they're definitely like really strong side deck cards. But at the end of the day, like flipping, you know, a dimensional barrier is not actually going to win you the game outright. And I know that's like weird because you're thinking, well, no, if they flip it, then I can't play and they beat me in the next turn. But it's not necessarily true, right? Like I think with a lot of these Floodgate cards, um, 
Sometimes you'll use these floodgates or blowout cards and still not actually win the game. We've seen Nibiru's happen and just end up not actually being, you know, like deciding the game. We've seen evenly matched happen and like not decide the game. I think Konami just keeps the cards around because like it at least allows like little Jimmy to maybe pick up one or two wins at locals each week, even if he doesn't actually win the tournament. Is that a good reason to keep floodgates around? Um, maybe, maybe not, but I think that could be just what Konami's thinking. Who knows? That's just sort of a stance on it. You guys can, of course, like, you know, feel free to disagree. It's not the end of the world. Um, and my last sort of topic, I guess, on this is, like, what happens next? Um, after a small ban list like this, you know, what what's it mean for the future? Uh, I mean, I think that this just means that the, for the format, like I said, it gets to kind of, like, we get to navigate it without Konami sort of moving a lot of different parts around. They're just saying, hey, with the stuff that's been happening so far, like, you know, Unchained and, like, all these decks you know, how are players going to adapt? What are the card trends going to be? I think just Arise Heart alone being out the format opens up a lot of things because now cards like Ultimate Slayer and Forbidden Droplet that, like, were previously hard to justify running because of, you know, like, not being able to discard, like, send things to the graveyard for their costs, you know, now those cards are suddenly relevant so that can actually change the landscape of, you know, how a deck like maybe, you know, Pirelli does because they might be able to be outed a little more easily. Or, you know, how, like, Unchained and stuff works. Because you could use Ultimate Slayer on one of their monsters that's going to try to, like, you know, link with one of yours. There's all kinds of little micro-interactions that open up. So even though it was a small list, I do think it actually could change a lot of stuff moving forward. And we still do have, you know, Age of Overlord on the horizon. So I don't think that anyone's, like, really complaining that the format won't be exciting or different or interesting. I think that people just wanted more. Um, but Konami did not see fit to do that. Maybe that means we've got, you know, a really big ban list around the corner for whatever month that'll be, December, January. Who knows, because that's my final kind of little bit on this, is that I do think Konami could quell these issues, like, just these player kind of, like, impression issues by just giving ban list dates. Um, there's a million reasons, I'm sure, why they don't give ban list dates. Maybe they want to, you know, remain flexible, or maybe it's, like, you know, getting Japanese approval. I'm sure they have, like, some say in it. I don't know what it is, but I do think that maybe giving players, like, dates on the lists would just help to kind of ease tensions around that. And really, ideally, patch notes, but then I think pe people would just complain about the patch notes. or be like, well, oh, you said this is an unfair card, so you banned it. Well, why don't you ban this, this, and the other? So that's probably why they kind of don't do that very much. So, uh, yeah, anyways, that's uh, my stances on it. I, I feel like um, it's not bad that it's a small ban list. I think it keeps things... Uh, things get to just kind of develop as they would. Um, but I do think maybe people need to, you know, like realize that I think it's not... Like, Konami's leaving more in our hands to figure out than they might usually do. I do think ban list dates would be good. I do think bringing a few more things off the ban list would be good, right? Like, I'm, 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 I don't mind Harpoor coming back, right? But, um... In terms of, like, you know, other deck, like, not enough stuff getting hit, mm, I don't think it's too bad. All right, well, anyways, let me know what you guys think down in the comments, and um, also, if you're watching this, I know it's, like, kind of late when I'm uploading it now, but um, the Pot of Greed episode for tomorrow is going to be a little bit delayed. Alec was sick today, so we weren't able to record it, so it's going to be, like, we're going to record it in the morning and then release it on, like, Thursday evening, so be uh, on the lookout for that. All right, gone on long enough. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Pass turn.